Hey guys, this is Lil with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today I wanted to revisit the very first uh, video that I did talking about Hydra and that video was about how to build your teams and how to plan them out. Today I wanted to do exactly that. So I wanted to talk about, uh, and we'll see how long it goes as to whether I split this into two videos, I wanted to talk about some of the best champs for the different roles that I spoke about in that video, uh, whether that's your support, your debuffer, your reviver, um, or your damage dealers. Talk about some of the best champs in those roles and then take one of those. I'm looking at a roster, how do I build three teams from that who are my best champs? Um, so one of my clan mates is looking for exactly that, posted me his roster, I promised to look at it, I don't know, like a week ago and didn't. And so we're going to look at that live today. Uh, what I might do is split that into a separate video. It depends uh, how long we end up running, just talking about um, some of the top champs. So apologies, I'm going to flip over to one of those lovely bright white pages in my OneNote just to talk about um, who me and my clan think are the best champs in different roles uh, in the game and I think I've updated it but we'll find out in a minute so uh, let's flip over. Okay so I appreciate that that looks quite small uh, for you guys so let me just zoom it in. Um, now last time in in that video and I'll, I'll pin it somewhere um, I talked about the sort of roles that I'm trying to fill and to be honest when I wrote this uh, uh, this note here I'll be honest I've probably changed my priorities since then um, just as you get a bit more into Hydra I would say now the two main things are a provoker and a mischief tank that is always the first thing I'm looking for on anyone's account when they send me a roster who can be a mischief tank here, who's going to control the head of decay to stop it from cleansing all the time. The next one I'm looking for is who have they got as the sort of those big revivers, those big support champs uh, that are really going to help out the team. And then usually I'm looking, okay, who are we looking at block buffs, who are we looking at speed up, speed down, then I'm starting to look at, okay, who's going to do our speed control, debuffing and damage. Those are sort of the things I look for. And obviously the more, the better legendaries for Hydra are the ones who do multiples of those. Um, that's always, always the case and that's why, you know, those sort of uh, champs that fill lots of those roles are, are really good. Let me move myself out of the way a little bit. I thought I had a flipped view. I don't, so apologies. I'm going to flip myself now. There we go. Hopefully you can see some more of this uh, of this now. So I'm going to, I'm not going to look at this left to right just because that's not how I usually think about the champs. What I usually look at is, okay, who are the best revivers and support champs? Now, Duchess is a no-brainer. Her passive just mitigates so much AoE damage, and all damage in Hydra is AoE. Siffy, again, she's just bringing so much. She's bringing a really good revive. Uh, she's got healing on her A1, and she's got all those buffs, um, you know, that increased speed, that block debuffs. I would say Pytheon, for me, exactly the same. He His passive reducing your damage taken by the amount of buffs uh, that you have. You're going to have a lot of buffs in Hydra probably on your team. So again, Pytheon, he brings that cleanse, that block debuffs, that passive to reduce everyone's damage taken and a revive. Great champ. Uh, the same with Uko. Again, these are all people filling multiple roles because Duchess is bringing that veil to deal with the Head of Torment. Uko is bringing that buff strip if they do get the buffs and she's bringing that uh, block debuffs. Not the most reliable block debuffs champ because those sort of protected buffs that the heads get when they first spawn can cause you mischief. Not not head of mischief but just in general. So you know not the best there but she brings so much kit you know that increased speed, that decrease attack, the AoE attacks, uh, she's great. Uh, if I wasn't using her in arena, which I am, I use her, I have her in a build that does both, I'd probably put her in a taunting set 
um, just because that AOE A1 would be brilliant, is brilliant for if you're controlling the, the head of decay, just, just adding in some extra provoke. It depends who's on your roster. Um, so again, other champs here, yeah, um, I'll be honest, Ursala, don't really use her so much now. Um, it depends who you've got. I was struggling for revivers back then. She's a good revive, but she, like Uko, she uses it right when you don't need her to and it's on slightly too long a cooldown. Uh, Godseeker, really good. Rektar, really good. So you, I've got stars against the people who are top class in this area. And then I've got bold for people who also do something else. So that's sort of the key here. So I would say actually Cardiel, you know, does a lot. He's bringing his ally attack, he's bringing some healing and he brings a revive, uh, you know, uh, the revive on death. Arbiter, I would say, drops off quite quickly. You wouldn't want to bring her in anything later than hard mode. Rektar, really good. Yeah, she's got that veil that's going to help you deal with torment, and she's top tier for that. She's also going to bring that decrease attack A1. Um, she's also bringing a lot of healing, and she's bringing a revive. Not an AoE revive, but still a revive. So, you know, if you don't have one of these top four, which hopefully you do, because two of them were fusions recently, then, you know, a God Seeker or a Rektar are really good in that revive slot. Okay, so Torment. And usually I don't, I'm, I just talk about Torment because it's next to it and, it, and it's not, um, and it's the short one. Um, yeah, you need to counter those fears. You either bring a Shamel, who's going to cleanse those fears and boost your lead, um, your lead champ. The, I would only bring him, I only bring him when there is torment in the starting lineup. Otherwise, honestly, I bring Duchess, I bring Rector, or I don't prepare for head of torment, if I'm honest. Uh, I just rely on cleanses and block debuffs. Uh, no, you can't be blocked. Just rely on some cleanses and, and just get it down as quick as you can. I don't think Shamal brings enough to the team. I think if there is a Head of Torment in the starting lineup, bring him with no damage and plan for the Head of Torment to stay alive as long as possible. Um, when I first built him, I built him high damage in a in a uh, in a toxic set to try and yeah trying to kill that head. But actually, that head is what's giving you all your damage because the idea of that sort of a setup is you put Shamal, you put let's say Geomancer or Ninja in the lead position, they're going to keep getting turns over and over from all that boosted turn meter. So you don't want Torment dead in that scenario, you want him giving your lead champ as much turn meter as possible. So, you know, Shamal counter-attacking every time, you can kill that head quite quickly if you build damage into his, into his kit. So let's talk briefly. Uh, let's uh, so the next two sort of slots that I said I would fill, and I always look for mischief tank and provoke. Uh, there's loads of videos looking at who's the best mischief tanks and things like that. So I'm not going to go over all of that here. Um, a blood shield ring helps, but I wouldn't rely on it. You can use Shamal in a blood shield ring as your mischief tank. You can. I wouldn't. I have for lower difficulties, but, you know, a little bit of damage is going to eat through that shield in no time and the head of mischief is going to just go wherever he wants to. Um, Bivold's good. Again, you know, he's bolded out here and start here. For me, he's probably my best provoker on my account. He's only got one provoke. He's got it on his A1, but it's not a super high land rate. So he's okay. He's not the best, um, uh, sorry, Mischief Tank here. Sorry, I'm thinking Provoke because he's in the next column as well. Mischief Tank, really good. Uh, again, the problem with a Mischief, so a Mischief Tank is somebody who self buffs because the Mischief, Head of Mischief targets whoever has the most buffs to try and steal those buffs and that champ's turn meter. So you can build the whole team with high resist and just plan to resist everything. Um, or you build one champ super high resist, which is much easier. Um, Bivold is good, but the self buff that he brings is strengthened, which means you can't bring strengthen for the rest of your team. Um, in fact, I don't even have my other mischief tank on this list, but he should be. Uh, so let's add him in now. Uh, that is 
Ragash, who actually double buffs himself. He has two self buffs. One is a perfect veil, which he brings to himself and the other uh, damage and one other damage champ. Uh, and the other is he has increased defense on his A1. The problem, and, and again, he's bringing multiple things because he's also bringing you a decreased defense. He's also bringing you a strengthen and an increased speed. The problem is then you can't bring increased defense into the rest of the team because that's his self buff. So, you know, someone like an Aboro where her self buff is a revive on death that's something that most of the time you're not bringing into the team so actually you don't need to worry you can bring increased defense you can bring strength and all those things that are going to help you last longer into the fight so again you know what we do and again i'm going to do it i'm probably going to split it out into a separate video at this point because we're 10 minutes in um is i look through this list and i go right who have you got that's top tier in these roles yeah so provoke cantra top draw for provoking same with uh and i don't know why he's not uh, up higher on here he should be i think i just actually put him in the wrong place uh skull lord vargal again top tier krisk is top tier everywhere in hydra bivald is good uh i mean he is top tier as a provoker i had to for mine i had to take his damage out of his build because i didn't have him fast enough now that i've sped him up he's a lot more consistent Morley brings a two-turn provoke. She's great because if you build her fast, she can really, really speed your team up. So Morley's passive is every time she's hit, your, te your team gets turn meter boost. Your whole team gets turn meter boost, um, which is good, but it resets every time she takes a turn. So that's like having 15% turn meter boost on a one-turn cooldown and she's bringing a two-turn provoke, and she's bringing a revive, so that's really good. Um, Husk is really good to supplement your provoker. Yeah, if your provoker's eaten, Husk can keep that head under control for a turn or two, with a bit of luck, for you to get them out. Yeah. And then there's a few others here, like Soulless. I use Soulless as my provoker. He's fine, he extends the duration of debuffs, so pair him with a Geomancer. Geo can get a couple of burns out, he can extend them, and then Geo can, you know, I've, I've managed to get Geo with burns on all four heads because Soulless is extending that debuff on the heads. Okay, so that's what I usually do. I would usually go look for who's going to be our Mischief Tank, who's going to be our Provoker, can we fill multiple roles with the same person, Who's going to be our reviver? Then I would look for who's going to be our block debuffs. Now, if you've got a good, reliable mischief tank, you could argue that you don't need block debuffs. The same the other way around. If you've got um, a good, reliable, fast block debuffs champ, you could say I don't need a mischief tank. Personally, I always pack both. Um, I probably run my teams more prepared for everything, uh, lower on the damage dealers, and then I last, long, last longer into the fight. Um, it's up to you. I've seen people do it totally the other way around. I really, I just like having that control. Um, and, and, you know, if your mischief tank gets eaten, mischief starts going crazy, at least you've got block buffs to fall back on. There are other things that you want to block as well, right? That poison cloud, uh, the mischief head, you want to block the ally protect, can't even remember which head does that now. Uh, you want to block the, uh, the, the increased attack on the head of wrath, things like that. So I think personally, I always bring block, block debuffs into every team, um, and look at that, you can see we haven't updated this for a while, uh, the clan, so again, Uko in here is a great option. Uh, she's also great because she brings multiple roles. Uh, I'm sorry that that font is different, I will fix that because that will drive me crazy. Um, Umbral, I don't think is top tier here, she just doesn't bring enough. Deliana is good, Archbishop is really good, Gurptuk is good i haven't really used mine i did build him i did plan to use him but he just 
he is outpaced by, you know, uh, uh, Ugo and Uko. If you've got two Ugos and one Uko, you're done for block debuffs. You don't, you don't need anyone else. Uh, also not in here is two Hanarak. She is down here. Yeah, and what I would normally do then is go, right, uh, yeah, how many sort of slots have I filled? I've got my Mischief Tank, I've got my Provoker, I've got my Reviver, I've got my Block Debuffs Champ. I probably need some speed control and some damage at this point, yeah? So I'm bringing in, again, anything hard and above. I'm bringing in my Royal Guards, my Husks. I prefer Husk over Royal Guard. He's easier to keep alive. And he brings that Provoke, which is really useful. I'm bringing in a Ninja. If I had an Acrisia, I would certainly bring her in. I just pulled a Tunisia, so I will be trying her out in Hydra. Um, yeah, or like, so it depends who is on your roster and how you can build your teams, but also how you want to split your champs up. Uh, I'm going to record another video, another separate video in a minute, just talking about, okay, right, when I'm looking at my account, I've got a Lady Kimmy, I've got a Shamrock, and I've got a Necmo. How do I split them in my teams? What makes sense? Um, okay, guys, I'm going to cut it off there. This is my clans list of top tier champs in each role. I'm sure it's not extensive. There are champs on here that I probably wouldn't include. Uh, Vrask, I don't think he's any good for this. We made this when Hydra first came out. Um, like if I take Withier, yeah, Withier is an amazing healer and cleanser. Um, she really is. I wouldn't bring her into her. I've got her. I use her in arena all the time. She's in some of my main arena teams. Um, certainly for 3v3. But I wouldn't bring her into Hydra because she just doesn't bring enough. She brings a cleanse, she brings a big heal, but she doesn't bring anything else. Whereas if I look at a Rectar, she's bringing revive, decrease attack, uh, perfect veil and heal. Um, Kyoku bringing decrease attack, HP burn, depending. Um, Ally protection, yeah. She's bringing uh, and increased defense if she's if she's hit with a crit. There are just there are better options. Um, the same with Vogoth. He's good, but all he's bringing is healing. And what you really want is to start bringing champs that do more. Like Mithrala is top tier because. She brings that Hex, which is going to help you deal with, uh, be able to kill the Head of Mischief, and also increases your damage. <clears throat> she also brings that Cleanse, she also brings buffs, yeah, so she brings the increased defense and strengthen, um, and, uh, yeah, and a few poisons on her A1. But it's those champs that bring a lot of utility to your team, um, anyway. I'll stop rambling. Anyway, guys, that's everything I wanted to cover off. Uh, what I'll try and do is I'll probably find a way to put that list of champs onto Google Drive or something and link it down in the description so that you guys can take it from there and uh, use it yourself. Um, I'm going to record another video right now going through what I would do when I get a roster and how I would then build three teams on that. So hopefully you're liking the Hydra content uh, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Do like, do subscribe, uh, it helps me out. If I get to a thousand subscribers, which seems a long way away right now, then I get to uh, access to the test server and things like that, which means I can just try some things out for you guys. So please do subscribe. Thanks guys and I'll see you in the next one.